It's noon here on Monday, May 29th, Memorial Day, and this is news that you can use from YAA with your hosts, Zach and Ray, and um, yes, we're in the condo together. Um, we, we are indeed um, using the green screen to show a picture of my condo as opposed to, well, just what we normally do. But before we get started, let's just say on Memorial Day that... This is my own personal opinion. I'm, I'm not quite sure how and why we think it's okay to celebrate Memorial Day with the, well, mattress sales and car sales and hot dogs and hamburgers, when really this is a day to uh, to honor those who, who made the ultimate, ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our country so that we could actually be here today. Uh, this is a day when we honor those who, who died in service um, fighting on behalf of this country. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure we, we, we do them the honor that they deserve by, hey, come on out, get some free hot dogs, hamburgers, and a big discount on your next car. But that's just me. And I, and so, but we're going to have a good day here today. We are actually running a special back at too soon. <laughs> I believe it might have been. All yeah. right. No, I completely yeah. agree. Um, my grandfather served. Did, yeah. did did folks in your family serve? Yeah, my my father was uh, was uh, in the army. So both of my family. grandfathers were in the army. Yeah, he yeah. he served during the Korean conflict. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Now they yeah. remember it. We appreciate those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Yes. That being said, Dad, I found something very very interesting. Okay. Proof that yeah. the used car market is falling in front of us. I know. No. No. Hear me out. Hear me out. I think I'm falling in front of you. I'm right, falling dang. and I can't get up. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. We're going to pull it up on the screen. Okay. And again, give us sound checks. Let us know what's going on. It's the first time in a while we've done the in-person setup. All right, Dad, one of our Car Edge Coach customers. Yes. I'll say that three times fast. A Car Edge Coach customer, Car Edge Coach customer, Car Edge Coach customer. And Car I Edge Coach customer named Quinn. Oh my, I, no, I'm not saying that three So times. Quinn, yeah, yeah. Quinn contacted us and yeah. Quinn's looking to buy a used 2013. Oh, by the way, chair banana sunrise and it's <laughs> 10 after 11. Quinn is looking to buy a 2013 Sprinter van. Yes. So it pops. A 2013? He re, yeah, look at his prices. Wow. Here's the deal. Here's how I know yeah. the used car market is starting to tumble in front of us. That price, yeah. their best price yeah. at Elgin CDJR yeah. is $49,990. Yeah. What can I possibly show you that would help corroborate why I'm saying the used car market is falling down in front of us? Think about it. What could I possibly show you? Oh, were you going to show me that they were asking $80,000 for it before? Uh, you're not too far off. If I go to the listing, Dad, yeah. carage.com, use the buy feature. This is 100% free. You can yeah. see they've had it for 127 days. Yeah. Okay. Asking price right now, $49,900. Can we just call it 50 grand? 50 grand. Yeah. Look at this then. Yeah. Yeah. And your point? My point is. Yeah. One other piece to this. Yeah. Look at that stock number. To trade. They traded this likely. van yeah. in. Yeah. Back in March. Yeah. And they listed it for sale. For 70 for grand. For 70 grand. Yeah. Now, what else could I show you that would help corroborate that used car? Because, again, if, for those of you who are on the yeah. podcast and you don't watch, a $20,000 price drop in four that, months. That, three that, months. Three months. And that and that doesn't indicate that the, that the market's crashing. Not to me. That indicates that they had a hell of a lot of nerve to ask that much money for the vehicle in the first place. It is. Let me help you with this. It is a 10-year-old Sprinter van. It is not brand new it is not one or two years old it is 10 years old now i noticed that it shows that it only has thirty-seven thousand miles on it now i don't want to say that i find that part of it hard to believe um that would be like me saying hey i need a hundred thousand dollar sprinter van so i can drive 3700 miles a year like <laughs> i drive on my mini um so you know perhaps the odometer's never been rolled back i don't know I, mean, it, I don't know if people are driving these things like crazy. So I, I believe the odometer reading. Okay. So this is what's also fascinating. Dad, you plug it into Black Book. Yes. What do you think the Black Book retail value on this thing is? I think the Black Book retail value is in the upper 30s. 
black book retail on this, Deb. Yeah. Great condition. You're right. Upper 30s. Average condition, 32, 350. Yeah. Poor condition, 29,000. This thing would probably sell at the auction for 25 grand. And they're asking for double that. Yeah, well, you know, they, and they're already down twenty grand on asking. And price. they might, they might have, they might have uh, paid uh, uh, dearly for it, um, but not that dearly. I mean, they, they, you know, I, I'm sure whoever traded it in uh, with the service records, seventeen service records in ten years. So every year they were getting their low mileage oil change. What else are you getting done to the vehicle with thirty seven thousand miles on? Um. I, I'm sure that that person trading in and just kept saying, oh, it's a 37,000 mile sprinter van. Okay. It might be 10 years old, but it's a 37,000 mile sprinter van. Somebody's going to want this. Vans are hard to come by. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe they paid $35,000 for it. Maybe, maybe they paid 40 because it was. You think a couple months ago they paid 40 for that? They probably paid way more. Trading it in? Really? Van prices have been sky high. Are, are, are you trying to tell me that, that... You think they were trying to make 20 grand on that? Are, are you trying to tell me that, that that the used car manager had his head so far up his butt <laughs> that, he, that he would pay that he would pay $15,000 more for it than what it was really worth? Yeah, here you because go. Because it from, had low miles? From Saul. Here it is. Now. Yeah. I had a few customers in my old dealership look for these, and they couldn't find them. Yeah. Huge shortage on them because they are great for delivery and mobile business. Yes, I yeah, get I that. Think, I, I, I bet you they traded in at a premium because I bet you at the auctions four months ago, they were selling for ridiculous prices, and now they're not, which to me would then be an indicator that the used car market. This is this. Remember the van shortage? Which we're still yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Vans, uh, vans like this appreciated. What was it? It was for like a year and a half. Uh, yeah, it was over a year. It was because because yeah. what would happen, guys? We look at the black book data every week, and they would have a special call out. We, I remember doing this last year. We do the weekly mar used car market update, and it would be week forty eight in a row, week fifty eight in a row, week sixty two in a row. It was well over a year of vans yes. going up in price. Yes, that but that was last year. That 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 stopped. That stopped well before March. So and if, I understand. So if prices it. stop going up, I, doesn't that mean they're crashing? Tanking, no, it doesn't falling, mean it doesn't, exploding, doesn't mean imploding. any of that. It means that they're normalizing, that they're rationalizing, that 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 they um that, that they understood that you couldn't continue that it wasn't sustainable for that trend to continue. Now, I don't know what it was in March, but you know, in March it was several months worth of well, they hadn't been increasing in value or appreciating in value quite as much as they had been um you know okay you're you're of the opinion that they 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 must have they must have put like 45 grand in this vehicle which would have been probably fifteen thousand dollars more than what they were going through uh, Mannheim at but i what, disagree man what you know well you know what <laughs> I'm glad I'm not that used car manager because <laughs> I wouldn't want to have to explain to the owner how I put fifteen thousand dollars more in that vehicle than I should have because it had thirty-seven thousand miles on it, and three and a half months later we're still sitting on it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, you know, yeah, you have to. There's times that you have to step up for a vehicle, and you say, you know, there's there's that old saying in the car business: you can never pay too much money for a nice used car. And you always pay too much money for a piece of crap. Okay. But so utilizing that theory of you can't pay too much money for a nice used car. That that all falls within some semblance of reason. Uh, you know, what was what was that sprinter van 10 years ago? Yeah, give me a second. Because we had a, a couple mm. folks in the chat ask yeah. that as well. Yeah, what was it? A seventy thousand dollar van? Let me see. Give me a second. MSRP 2013. And you're blind or noisy, man. Well, that's only because it's uh, breezy here at the short day. <laughs> All right, let's see. I don't know if this is going to be exact, but we can do the research. The high road, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. 2013 Mercedes Benz Sprinter. I click on pricing. Where was pricing? Over here on the left. Pricing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a 10-year-old van selling at the same 
when they were asking 70 grand for this, because again, the reason I, I picked this vehicle, again, shout out to Quinn, one of our yeah. Car Edge coach customers, the, the Car Edge coaches have today off. Yes, so I'm as stepping well up. they should. Yeah. Absolutely, they should. So I'm stepping up, I'm doing doing chat, and or not doing chat, I'm doing email support today. Yeah. Um, Quinn came in, he's looking to buy this 2013 for 40, so more than the original MSRP. The reason yeah. it, it- And it's 10 years old. The reason well, it, it only has 37,000 miles. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the reason it caught my attention was because yeah. of this price history. Yes, but but price history doesn't mean anything if it's overpriced to begin with. If the asking price is significantly more than it should be to begin with. But think about it. We saw price histories like this last year, Dad. That went the opposite direction. Yeah, but this is not Barrett Jackson. Okay, this is this is not a collect. Well, maybe it's a collector vehicle. Um, <laughs> It, and if somebody pays 50 grand for it, it certainly should be a collector vehicle. Um, but it, it's it's a 10-year-old van. And my and my supposition is that it's not much of a van, okay? Um, or I don't know. Maybe the guy did a lot of uh, – maybe he reconfigured the interior or something. But why would you spend all that money to drive it 3,700 miles a year? I, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. Can we pull up the listing? Does it tell us anything about that vehicle? All right, here we go. Let's see. We've got the where was it? Oh yeah, there's the van. Yeah, yeah. Go 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 through. Does it show Carfax any, one owner? Does it show any interior pictures? Twelve seats. Yeah, think about that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it does. It must. Oh, oh gosh, I don't know how to interact. I don't know how to interact with this. Okay. No, it looks kind of... So it's like... Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it's a 12-passenger van. $70,000. Okay, a rental company wouldn't pay that type of money for it. So they yeah, could, nothing. So they could take their customers from the airport. I love this. Yeah. Recent arrival. Recent arrival. For four months. Three and a half. Um, 120 days. 120 days. Yeah, okay, four, four months. months. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The wait, piece. wait, wait. Go back up. Uh, Oh, that's this, the these average are KB, yeah. KBB customer. Yeah, so the average would have 127,000 miles on it. So no, there's nothing special about this. This okay. So you think this more so highlights how crazy the used car market got for these types of vehicles that were in shortage than it does highlight the fact that we are reverting back to the mean. Which, considering I don't have it queued up, considering the yes. uh, Mannheim market index went on the chart, it went like this. Whoop. Yeah, no, I get and that. And I'm going like this. That's like, no, I, I get all that. I get all that. I, I, I think this highlights um, the the greed of the dealer and maybe um, the aggressiveness of the pre-owned manager to have. I, I don't know. My my suspicion is they paid too much for it, but they they couldn't have paid that much too much. To, <laughs> Or you use know, car managers in hot water. You know, I mean, if it, I would think if they've sat on it for four months, um, and I don't know how many times it's been driven or how many times people have looked at it, um, but I would think, you know, if you went in there and, and you offered them $38,000, maybe they'd sell it. I told Elgin to, to pretty much say to them, hey, I know you've been sitting on this for four months. I know it's a trade-in. I know you've uh, dropped the price by 20 grand. Give me a real offer because they gave him, they gave Quinn, excuse me. I suppose, yeah. They gave Quinn an out the door price. Yeah. Of advertised price plus taxes and fees. Yeah. And I showed him the black book and I said, you're not paying that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them you want a real offer because it, it, that vehicle at auction. You, right you now, can't, you can't, it, it's not here. It's not to say to them, I want a real offer. It's to say to them here, I've done some research and my research, and here's, here, just so you know, here's what I've been able to find and share the things that he's been able to find and say, my research indicates that this should probably be priced closer to thirty-five to $38,000. Um, how close can we get to, to those numbers? It's your time as the potential customer not to ask them for an offer. They made their offer. Their offer is forty nine nine ninety or forty nine nine ninety five. This is your moment to 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 make an offer for it, and say, 
you know, from all the research I've been able to do, looking at Black Book, did it, did it, did it, pulling up MSRPs from when it was new, this is probably about a thirty-five to thirty-eight thousand dollar van on the retail side of things. How close can we get to that number? Oh, right. and please, when you tell me, well, we can't get we can't get as close as you'd probably like. Don't come back to me in in the in the upper in the 40s mid to upper forties. <laughs> you know. All right, well, some I, parameters. I think this is um, these types of examples yes. of vehicles that we're working on, we're working with customers on. Yes. I'm going to do more of them over the coming weeks and months that we're together here because I do think it starts to highlight the reversion to the mean, which means used car prices starting to come back down a little bit, yes. even on the most in-demand vehicles, which again, a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van that was selling for almost or advertised for almost $30,000 more than its original MSRP, that was the peak. We're not going back there. You know, I don't see the, you know, I mean, you can. There, there's the old saying, and it, and it applies to both the customer and the seller. You can't get what you don't ask for. Okay. So the dealer says, okay, let's take a shot. Let's ask 70. Let's see what we get. Let's see what kind of offers we get. You know, maybe, maybe somebody comes in and says, okay, I'll pay you 65. Yeah. Okay. Well, apparently nobody's come in and said, I'll pay you 65 or 60 or 55 or 50. Yep. Um, so, but yeah, you, you can't, you can't get what you don't ask for. So they're asking, they're trying as the customer, you have, it's the same thing. You can't get the price you don't ask for. So you need to ask. Yep. I hear you, know? you Pops. Yeah. Let's switch gears. Let's go to the chat. We had a thoughtful contribution come in from Mark. Mark yes. is a long time member of the Carriage community. Thank you, Mark, for the Carriage team in honor of our fallen heroes. Gentlemen, Mark, we 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 sit behind the camera. There's there's so many people that we're we're paying our respects to today. Yes. So thank you for the contribution and all of our yeah uh, I I've never quite I I've, I've never quite understood it honestly and I mean this in, in, in all sincerity. I've never quite understood how you can wish somebody a happy Memorial Day. Hope you have a happy Memorial Day. Um uh, you know, we're, we're, we're honoring those who sacrificed their life. How can that be happy? You know, I'm, I'm so happy that, you know. Well, my, maybe it's because it's a day where, where we you're, should remember, you're proud. Of, you know, we, we, we should remember those folks and we should honor those folks. But I, I don't think, I think it, it should be more of a day of reflection than a day to sit around and go, geez, I, I hope. I, I, I hope I can eat three hot dogs today. I mean, no, I get it. I yeah, get it. I think a lot of people have appreciation and respect for for yeah. the military and for those who have defended our our country I, and I, our I principles will say, and values. I will say, having been in the retail automobile business, which is not that much different from any form of retail business, the the concept of using whatever holiday it is as a as an excuse to have a sale is at times abhorrent. And today is one of those type of days. And, and I, you know, I participated in it for 40 some years. I, I doesn't mean I liked it, but you know, it, it's, it just became, it, it, it's a thing. Oh, we're going to have this huge Memorial day sale. Well, yeah, well, there's no better way to honor the fallen than to drive home in your new Ford 15, or your, your new Ram 1500 pickup truck. No, there's many better ways. Yeah, I hear you. Speaking of which, our Father's Day sale is going to be top notch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad, let's come back to the chat here. There's a couple of these things yes. that we should turn our attention to. However, first, from Robin Stone, I wanted a 2018. Mazda CX-5. However, the difference in price between used and new is only a few thousand. I'm way ahead if I get the new one. You Absolutely. are indeed. Absolutely. I drove. Yes. So I drove. We're here at the Jersey Shore. For those of you already got stopped by a kind gentleman yesterday. We weren't. We didn't do any uh, any live stream yesterday. Yes. He yells across the street. Aren't you on YouTube today? Mm -hmm. No, no. We're not, taking not a day today. off. Yeah. Um, but that gentleman, you know, I, I, I drove to get here to be with you, Deb, which I'm really excited about. Well, you drive through the Port of Baltimore. I mean, you know what you see when you drive to the Port of Baltimore? You see all the cars that just not come just off cars, the rail yards. Not just cars. Cars and trucks and Jeeps. Boom. <laughs> you see Jeeps and Rams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they all You come see off. Jeeps and Rams. That's pretty much all you see is Jeeps and Rams in the Port of Baltimore. It is stocked yes. full yes. of Jeeps and Rams. It's yes. insane. It's like 
it's kind of mind boggling to see the amount of inventory there, which means yes. for certain brands, we had a video go out on the car edge channel today. Certain brands new makes way more sense than used. You know, and there's a lot of people that have tried to remind us that one of the reasons Stellantis has, uh, has stocked up on so many vehicles is because they're anticipating that there's going to be a UAW strike during contract negotiations. So they want, they want to have um, inventory available while the strike, if, if, and when that strike happens. Um, so I, I get it. I, I get it, but still, it's an inordinate supply at the moment. I'll, I'll pull up some data in a second. Yes. want to remind everyone, if you're not following over on Instagram, my car edge, we had, this is from one of our car coaches, Mario Space, as some of you know him. We've got on the 2023 Mazda CX-5s, the carbon and premium trim levels, 8% off of MSRP before any manufacturer incentives right now mm -hmm. is what we're seeing pretty much nationwide. And there's some obviously regionality as well. So Mazda, Dara and, and Zach, my sister and her yeah. husband, they have a Mazda CX-5. They got it under $30,000 yeah. out the door on a new car. Yeah. That's hard to do in today's yeah. market. All right, Pops, let's go here. We've got from Wayne. Yes. Raise prices 20 plus percent over two years and offer a great deal of a 10% discount. That is the new normal. Yes, that I'm, I'm afraid normal. so. You know, and, and, and part of that is inflation. And a bigger part of that is the fact that the manufacturers have decided to only build their their most expensive um high trim level vehicles so uh, when you when you combine inflation and you've cut out producing your less expensive vehicles yeah everything seems to have gone up 25 30 percent we've got here dad from fat guy in the kitchen good to see him here that with would us. be me <laughs> msrp is around forty six thousand dollars this is back to the yeah. center van they tried to sell a 10 year old model for $70,000. That's just greed, plain and simple. You were hitting the nail on the head, hoping someone comes in and says, okay. All I'll you do can do is hope. 65 yeah. from Leon. Good yeah. to see you here, Leon. I had to explain to my sister in the current market you take a $40,000 pickup, raise the MSRP to $75,000, then discount it to $60,000. Woot, woot. What a deal. Again, <laughs> well, that is the new well, normal. Well, you know, buying it for 60 is certainly a hell of a lot better than buying it for the 75 that they're asking. We got from ES, went up so high, it's still going to take time for it to normalize. Yes. However, it does really truthfully. I mean, you look at examples like the Sprint fan, it is starting to normalize. That at least has become clear to me. Well, uh, it's starting it, to. It absolutely is. You can't it, deny it, that it's starting. It's to. starting to become the, normal. the new normal. Yeah. Yes. Normalize yes. doesn't mean prices are going to go back to what they were pre pandemic. No. Normalize means prices are going to stop going up and used cars depreciate again, which yes. honestly, honestly yes. means. If you have a vehicle to sell, yeah, do it. I, I'm gonna, I'll pull it up on the screen right now. CarEdge.com slash sell. We've partnered with a company called CarWiser out there. Folks get, it works. It works really well. You get all the offers from all the dealers in your area in one place. If you haven't gotten these valuations, use it not only if you're thinking about selling a car. Yeah, but for when you're trading. When you're trading a car and also when you're buying a used car. One of the things I didn't do yes. was plug in that Sprinter van. Here. Yes, and see what kind of offer you can get. What would it. CarMax pay for yeah. it? What would Echo Park pay for it? So again, the reason I bring it up now is because as we start to see depreciation happening again for used cars, think about it. That Sprinter van still way overpriced. Yes. So yeah, if you have one sitting around, go sell it. We're gonna sell it, get the most for it. Can you hit me with? Or actually, you want to go? You want to do old school? Do you want to use the ad libs that I have? I don't. Well, you know, I mean, what the heck? I mean, give me a second. Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll give you all the time you need. We'll you're see not. If, you're not gonna be able to hear it. We'll, we'll see if it even works. We gotta close your blinds. Next well, no, time. I should open up the blinds so the wind can come in without hitting the blinds. All right, folks on the stream are gonna hear it. You're not. Yes. You ready? Yes. Where is it? Where I don't is know. It? Where is it? Really? You, you gotta, gotta be yeah, kidding. Indeed. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for you folks. Please let me know in the comments if it was. Again, yes. we're just getting back to being in person, which I really like. Me too. I like being next yeah. to you. I love I'm, you. I, I know I love you too. And I love being next to you. I'm not sure that I, I, I'm particularly fond of the setup that we have in here now. Check Instagram. I will post a photo over on Instagram of the setup. Uh, I think the setup's fantastic. No, of course you do. It's it's not it's not compromising where you're staying. I'm gonna clean it up. <laughs> I will clean it up before I leave. Ford finds promise in subscriptions for yes. commercial buyers. Ford yes. says four hundred thousand commercial customers. 
are already paying for software services via subscriptions. How might that translate to the retail side? All right. The reason this is today is really got to be kidding me. Yes. Because of all OEMs yes. to be in the industry publication touting their ability to sell subscriptions yes. is Ford. Another one is Stellantis. You can't even sell their own yeah. cars. Dad, why, why, why? Why are we moving towards subscriptions? And why are 400,000 commercial customers paying for these things? Um I can't answer that for the 400,000 commercial uh, uh, owners that are, that are actually paying for the subscriptions. Um, you know, obviously, every manufacturer wants to use their vehicles as a vehicle to be able to sell subscriptions. Um, they, they don't want to just make money wholesaling their completed vehicles to their dealer body to then sell them. They want to be able to continue to rake in money from those vehicles well into the future for subscription services. So that in the past, whatever whatever profit a manufacturer made, um, they were done. Once it was wholesaled to the, to the dealer, they were done making profit on that vehicle. Actually, it would start costing the money on that vehicle through warranty work and things of that, that nature. So this is an opportunity, as they see it, to get greater lifetime monetary value. Lifetime value, yeah, that's what yeah. they call it. Yeah. yeah, lifetime value out of out of every vehicle that they sell. Let me show you. Let's quantify this, Dad. Please, it's not a little I love bit of money. quantifying, please. Ford Pro, which yeah. offers EV as well as gasoline-powered vehicles, said it expects to eventually earn $2,000 Per vehicle annually on subscriptions. What 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 are the subscriptions that they're offering now? Some of them are charging related. One of them is this thing, Dad. It's a field service tool called Visor. Yeah. Vis, vis, vi, 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 how do you say that? How do you think? Well, Visor. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. Visor two eyes. Yeah. Visor. Just because you know. I think it's Visor. It's Visor. Try it one time. Viser, <laughs> see, I think it's catchy. <laughs> yeah. Charging services, yeah. so yeah, I don't yeah. know, but somehow they're going to charge people two thousand. I want to, I want to know what the potential side effects are. Viser, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah swelling around the no, injections. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, goodness gracious! Oh, yeah. I just, I love the idea of OEM saying to themselves, "You know what problem consumers have have said they have." They just can't spend enough money on our cars on an ongoing basis. Okay, but, let's offer like they're not solving a problem. But but my my this is just a guess. I don't know. You know, like if Viser or Visor helps helps you um, helps with a lot of things. Yes, yeah, it does, and and it helps with stiff neck. <laughs> <laughs> and and if 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 it helps like digitize your work schedule and your workload and invoicing and things. Don't those apps already exist? And why do you have to buy them through Ford? And couldn't you pay less buying them or, or getting them from someone other than Ford? It's just, you, you know, if you're, well, no, this doesn't necessarily no, no. correlate. Because what I was going to say, if you're smart enough to have a business, then <laughs> it, then you should be smart enough to be able to shop around and make sure that, that you're paying the least for the things that you need, as opposed to perhaps the most. But just because you're smart enough to have a business doesn't, mean you're smart enough it just doesn't i mean i had a business i wasn't smart enough i went bankrupt hey man i'm right there with you all yeah. right let's let's call it a show okay we are back together which we're very excited about the team will be back online tomorrow carhedge.com end of the month we're expecting some good deals here at the end of the month and honestly end of june is when we're expecting really really good deals so if you if you need help yes we're here to help check yes. out the car edge channel subscribe to this channel Follow us over on Instagram. You'll get to see the setup here. Just search Car Edge. And uh, yeah, thank you, Dad. This has been fun. Yeah, well, well, I can't wait. We'll, we'll be back here again tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, um, 8 a.m. in Anchorage, uh, 6 a.m. in Alaska, midnight in Manila. You know, I have heard you have not lived until you have done midnight in Manila. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.